In this video, I will be going over various methods of reducing the polygon count of models that use Vertex Alpha. If you are interested in learning more about Vertex Alpha, there is a playlist in this YouTube channel for exactly that. The reason we want to optimize models that use Vertex Alpha is that any polygon with 0% opacity is rendered invisible, but it is still loaded into memory and takes processing time to load, even though the polygon is invisible. Before I begin showcasing the different methods of optimization, I'll just go ahead and create a terrain with some basic alpha blending which we can work with. If you're on version 2021 or above, for GTA materials to work, set to max legacy and restart 3 DS Max. Now that we have our Vertex Alpha set, we can start optimizing it. Method 1. Procedurally deleting invisible Vertex Alpha. With this method, you simply paint your Vertex Alpha, and then a data channel modifier detects faces with 0% Alpha and automatically delete them on the fly. Start by adding data channel to your Alpha Blend model. This modifier lets you procedurally modify various types of mesh and material data. I will add a few operators. You can think of operators as nodes, which each serve their own purpose, and they tell three Deciskins max what to do with the incoming data. The first operator is Vertex Input. With this operator, I can collect a list of all vertices that are painted white in Map Channel 3. I will now add a point 3 to Float Operator, which is required to convert into Face Selection later. I will add a Convert to Sub Object Type operator. This converts the vertices to faces you should now see your white vertices selected in the data channel modifier. However, this is not what we want. I will add a normalize operator above the converter. This allows us to invert the vertex selection, which means it will select all black vertices. This is what we want, because we need to delete all black faces later. Finally, I will add a face output operator to select the faces for me. If I now add a delete mesh modifier, it will inherit the selection and interactively delete faces that are 0% opacity. You may notice that there are some areas with polygons that seem invisible. They are almost invisible, but not exactly. We can set a threshold for how transparent a face should be for it to be deleted by adding a scale operator.
You can now save the preset so that it can quickly be loaded the next time you need to optimize a vertex blend mesh. If you need to make changes to your vertex blend at any times, then you should disable your delete mesh and the data channel modifier so that they don't interactively delete polygons while you're trying to paint. If you have a large amount of white faces in your alpha blend mesh, then there are ways of optimizing them as well. However, it is only useful if there are several thousands of white faces, because this method requires stitching new edges and can easily create several hundreds of new polygons. It is also possible to reduce polygons of your mesh by using Pro Optimizer Modifier. And below the modifier, adding a Vertex Paint modifier, selecting Map Channel 3, clicking Capture, and then selecting Vertex Alpha Channel to transfer into that channel. However, the Pro Optimizer method does not produce accurate results for all types of meshes. Method 2. Manually deleting faces with low alpha. With this method, you can select all vertices with a set alpha value at once, but it is not as reliable as method 1 because it is not as easy to see the result of deleting the faces before you view the model in-game. Start by adding an Unwrap UVW modifier and set it to work in channel 3. Because we painted our alpha mask in vertices, the UVs are just lines across the UV canvas. The bottom left are blacks, meaning 0% opacity, the top right are whites, meaning 100% opacity, and the in-betweens are grays, meaning semi-transparent. We need to select just the bottom left vertices, then Control i to invert selection, Control click polygon selection mode to convert the selection to polygonal, and finally delete. If we want to change our opacity threshold for deletion, then we need to jump back into the UV editor, change our selection, and repeat. This is why method 1 is much more convenient as it doesn't require as much going manual work and back and forth. Method 3. Poly Strip Terrain Blending. With this method, the only blending taking place is a path that follows the border between the two textures. You can think of this as a road directly on top of the terrain where two materials meet. The width of this road determines the softness of the blend. To get started, I'll create a simple plane and a multi-material container with a rock and grass material. I will use the cut tool to create a separation between the rock surface and the grassy area. For the blend effect, I will create a copy of my base terrain. With a chamfer modifier, we can determine the width of the blend layer. We can prevent some Z fighting by moving the center edge loop up by 0, 0, 1.
As a last step, add the alpha blend. With more complex terrains, such as the ones shown earlier in this guide, this method won't be very reliable because there will be random vertices on the model that cause problems with how the alpha blend is set up.